Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can replace or upgrade the solid state drive in a 13 inch late 2012 or early 2013 MacBook Pro. This one has the base configuration 121 gigabyte storage. For reference, we can look at how fast this drive is with a simple speed test. We'll go ahead and do two gigabytes and start that. So we're getting about 300, a little over 300 megabytes per second write speed and just about 400 megabytes read speed. The model we're going to replace this with is actually from a early 2013 and it's a 256 gigabyte SSD. And you'll want to be careful because a lot of these look the same. You're going to want the one with a really short end on one side and a larger end on the other. But you don't want the thin kind. You want them that, that are a little bit thicker. And that just has to do with how they fit. You can look at the details there. If you're looking for one of these, usually the sellers, um, I got this one on eBay they'll let you know which models it's for. But with that said, we're gonna go ahead and shut down the computer and flip it over. On the back, you're gonna find some P5 screws. And I have this screwdriver here. This is what you want, P5. And I've already taken them out, but you'll find them all the way around. Now something important to note is these screws here and here are going to be smaller than the ones around the rest of the edge. That's important to know when you're reassembling them. So after you've got those off, you can pry the back panel off and you'll be greeted with this. Now in here, what we came for is under this piece of plastic. So the first step is going to be to lift this connector up, and that will snap off. Then you're going to push in with your thumb here to release those tabs, and it should just pull out. And there you can see our drive is held in there with a T5 screw, which I have here. So we're going to unscrew that. And... Kind of get this drive wedged out there. We can go ahead and place the new one in here and screw it down. Now something interesting is the space in here is actually big enough for a 2.5 inch SSD or hard drive for that matter. It actually fits very nicely, and I am somewhat surprised that there are not adapters made that would allow you to use one of these. If there are, I don't know about them. If you do know about them, please let me know in the comments down below. I would love to check that out. But I digress. With this screwed back in, and I don't recommend leaving this on, but for testing purposes, that's what I'm doing, you're going to put it in like this and snap those down and clip this connector back. Then the back plate can go on and it needs to snap in place. There are some clips underneath you can push on here and you'll hear them snap into place. Just like that. And then you'll replace your screws. Remembering the small screws go in these two holes at the top. The rest of the screws are the same and interchangeable. Now, we'll turn this thing on. And we'll agree with a blinking folder. That means there's no operating system installed. So what you'll do, you will power the MacBook back off. And then you're gonna press the power button and hold down Option, Command, and the R key. 
and you'll get internet recovery. So again, that's going to be option, command, and R, just like that. This will load for a while, and eventually you'll get to pick a Wi-Fi network, which you will do, and then it will load into macOS recovery mode. Once you've entered in your network and a password, eventually you'll be greeted with this screen. And if for some reason you are not connected to Wi-Fi, you will click up here and select your network and enter the password. Now we can check disk utility and see our new SSD. I like to give them a fresh format and then you can name them. I usually just do Macintosh HD. Either, if you, if you know what all these are, then pick which one you want. If not, either macOS Extended Journal or APFS is appropriate. Once that finishes, we will go exit out of disk utility and we're gonna reinstall macOS. You'll go through these prompts as it directs you, and it should download macOS Catalina from the network and install it to your new drive. Now that we have finished installing and setting up macOS Catalina, we can check the About This Mac screen and see that we do have 251 gigabytes which is twice as much as we had before. And we can check the speed of our new SSD. Remember before we got a write speed of just around 300 megabytes per second, which seems like that's what we're getting here. And the read speeds were about 400 before, which looks about the same this time. So no improvements in speed, but we did double our storage capacity. And if you are just replacing one that doesn't work, well, then the speed isn't too important and you'll just be happy to have one that works. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you have any questions or run into any problems, leave me a comment down below and I will do my best to help you out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.